All right, so let's take a quick look at how we can build a progressive web app in just a few minutes. So to get started, uh, I'm going to go to the Get Started section here on Polymer Project. And I'm going to go to the Build an App section. And what we're going to do is that we're going to use the Polymer command line interface to, to kind of scaffold up the application itself. And in case you don't already have it, uh, go ahead and install the Polymer command line interface. This requires you to have NPM installed from before. So if you don't, uh, go ahead and do that before. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is just create a new directory for application. And in this case, we're going to build a classical to-do application. So let's make a to-do directory. We'll go into the directory and call Polymer init. So here you can see we have a couple of different uh, options on what kind of uh, template that we would like to create. In this case, uh, we're going to use the app drawer template, uh, which uses the purple pattern and will also generate the needed service worker for our progressive web application. Uh, with the basic project in place, I'm going to install a couple of additional components for us to use. So I'm going to include the paper input, the paper button, a local storage element, and Vaught and Grid and Date Picker. Uh, here you can see that I'm using a fixed branch of the Vaught and Grid, but if you're using Vaught and Grid 1.1 or later, uh, you don't need to include the fix there. Okay, so the next step is to just open this in our editor and see what we have. So you can see that we have an index file here, uh, nothing very special. Uh, we have a little feature detection here to see if we need to load a polyfill for Polymer. And basically, we do an import for our application element. And finally, we include it. The application element itself is in a source folder here. You can see that we have a couple of imports here. And basically, what it does is it creates a header, a little toolbar there. Uh, it has a drawer layout. So we have links to our different views here. We have views one through three. And uh, let's take a look at how this looks when we start it up. So uh, the Polymer command line tools come with a handy little helper. So we can just call Polymer serve and give it dash dash open to tell it to open up our browser for us. And here you can see that we have the application. We have views one, two, and three. So very good. Uh, we have a kind of basic application up here. So the next thing we want to do is start implementing our little to-do application. To do that, I'm going to go into the view one here. Uh, we need to import those elements that we just uh, downloaded. So the first one will be paper input. Then paper button. Bot and grid. And finally, just fix the path to these. So with that in place, uh, we're going to go in here and just replace the contents of the card with our own stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is just have a little form here where we can input stuff. So we'll have the input first. Uh, this will be the task. Then we'll have a date picker for the due date. And finally, a button just to submit the new task. Like that. Uh, then we want something to actually show the task. So for that, we're going to use the bottom grid. We're going to have two columns, one for the task and one for the due date. So skip the third column here. Uh, if we save this and run this, um, we can see that we get the uh, elements here. Uh, they're not really laid out the way I want to, so I'm just going to change the styles here real quick to make it look a little bit nicer. So we're just going to make the form into a flex box.
we're going to have the paper input take out most of the space here. Uh, the date picker, we're just going to give a fixed width for that. And finally, I'm going to just add a little bit of alignment for the button. Like so. Let's refresh this. Um, looks good. Let's add a little bit of spacing between there. good. So the next thing we need to do is hook up data binding. For that we're going to first define a couple of properties. A to do for the item at hand that we're editing and a array of to do's to hold the whole thing. So the to do is of type object and the value here We'll use a function to initialize that to a empty object. Uh, using the function here means that every instance uh, will get its own uh, value. Otherwise, the same value would be used for all instances, which uh, is not what we want. The to-dos are of type array, and value is, again, a function that just returns an empty array. So with those in place, we can do a little bit of data binding. We're just going to bind the value property here to uh, task. Then we'll bind the date picker to the due date. And note that we use the same properties here uh, as the columns as uh, in the to-do object. And uh, finally, what we want to do is tell what's going to happen when we push the button. So we're going to add in on tap event here and we're going to call a method called add to do. So let's go and implement that method. So add to do will just be a function. And in this function, what we want to do is call push on to do's and push the to-do that we just edited. So the other thing that we want to do is just clear the form. So basically just reset the to-do. So now that we're adding these elements onto the to-do array, uh, we're able to bind this to the data grid, to the items property. So if we save this right now and go and check how this works, let's refresh our browser. Add do stuff. We're going to get to this tomorrow and hit add. So you can see that this works. Uh, now there are a couple of problems here. So uh, first off, if we refresh this, you can see that we lose all of our to do's, which is not ideal. So let's, uh, let's take and fix that first. So for that, I'm going to use that lo local storage element that we included earlier. We're going to include our local storage here. Uh, we're going to put it here at the end of our template. Uh, we're going to give our storage a name, like to-dos. Uh, we're going to bind the to-dos array to this and then you can see that we have this on iron local storage load empty. So this is basically a method that gets called if the local storage is empty when we try to load it. So here uh, we can create a function that just initializes the to-dos array. To an empty array like that. So uh, let's go back to our application here. Let's do stuff again. Uh, we're going to still do it tomorrow. Hit add. And if we refresh this right now, 
uh, we can see that the actual value got persisted. So now it's working pretty much the way that we want it to work. Uh, the one thing it doesn't do is if we go into our network panel here and we put the throttling to offline. So basically we simulate not having a connection. If we try to start the application right now, uh, you can see that we just get the dinosaur game and it doesn't work the way that we expect a progressive web application to work. So how do we fix that? Uh, well, it turns out that there's really nothing that we as developers need to do uh, more than just do a build with Polymer. So uh, when we call build here, uh, it will actually generate a service worker and pre-cache the resources that we need in order to run the application, uh, at least serve the static uh, parts of the application even when offline. So you can see that it's building uh, two different packages, a unbundled version, which basically is suited for HTTP2, and a bundled version. And if we look at the build here, you can see that we have a service worker, we have a pre-cache file, which tells uh, the browser basically what needs to get cached whenever, uh, whenever we're offline or uh, need to use the application in a in a place where we have a bad connection. So what we'll do now is uh, just serve the built folder, build bundled, and let's serve that. We'll go back to our browser here. We'll do refresh. Let's open up the inspector here. Uh, go to our network tab here, and uh, let's refresh here. And you can see here, uh, let's make this a little bit bigger can see that some of these things are being served from a service worker. So in theory, uh, this should allow us now to go in and disable the network, put ourselves into offline mode, refresh the page, and still get a working application. So there you have it, uh, just a basic progressive web application in a few minutes using the Polymer app toolbox and some modern elements. If you want to learn more, uh, go to the Polymer website and to the Start section. Uh, to find some more elements, you can go into the Polymer Element Catalog here, uh, find a bunch of them, and also to the Vaden Elements page, uh, where Vaden has a extended set of components that are built to work uh, seamlessly together with Polymer.